We're going to go ahead and call our meeting to order. This will be the Palatka City Commission's February 22nd, 2018 uh, Commission meeting. Um, at this time, we'd like to welcome each of you here today. Uh, we're going to have an invocation by Reverend Dan Phillips, Associate Pastor of Francis Baptist Church. As Reverend Phillips here. Seeing that he's not here. We're going to go ahead and ask Commissioner Campbell if you would lead us in prayer. And Gerard Poston, would you lead us in the pledge? Everyone, please stand by your hands. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, your brand new mercy that you bestowed upon us, God. We ask as we go forth with this meeting, God, that we conduct this meeting in a reflection, as a reflection of you, that we're able to come to deliberation and speak and move this city forward, God. We ask that you bless everyone that is present today, bless their households. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Commissioner Borum. Present. Commissioner Campbell? Present. Commissioner McCaskill? Here. All members are present to county for and you have a quorum. Thank you. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from the February 8th meeting and also from the February 12th workshop? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Moving on. Public recognitions and presentations. First up is a proclamation. Azalea Festival Day is March 2nd through 4th. Uh, we have representatives from downtown Black Inc. here today. Let's see if it's handling work time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Got yes, we're special ladies with you also today. Yes, I can. I'm going to introduce them as they yes. come up. Yes, I would. Just before we proclamation. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, good evening everyone. Good evening. Um, I would like to introduce you to five out of the seven, um, the 72nd Miss Florida Azalea Festival Queens. We're going to start from the, the smallest one. Choice Rayburn, Petite Miss. <laughs> Olivia Register, Tiny Miss. Miss Gabrielle Alford, Little Miss. <laughs> Destiny Long, Junior Miss. <laughs> and our oldest is Cassidy Chambliss, Miss Azalea. <laughs> We have baby and toddler. We just thought this would be a bit much for them tonight, so we will be will be seeing them, but not today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we had our pageant last Saturday. It was fabulous. Um, we do that once a year. These young ladies will be representatives of Putnam County and the surrounding areas. If you're having a book reading, book signing, photo shoot, whatever it is, an opening of a business, you need <coughs> someone to do a commercial for your business, please reach out to these young women. They need to do things in the community so that you know that they're there and you can use them to your disposable as far as your businesses are concerned. Thank you so very much. Ladies, thank you. Proclamation 
reads as follows. Whereas on March 22, 1936, the Palacca Floral Committee held a local flower and plant show at the Ravine Gardens, which was named the Azalea Festival. At the suggestion of Miss Susie Walton, a member of the committee, also on March 22, 1936, thousands of Shriners from all over the southeastern United States participated in the first annual All Florida Shrine Day, also held at the Ravine Gardens. This event, as this event was such a huge success that it returned to the Ravine Gardens the following year and was held in conjunction with the Junior Chamber of Commerce's JC's Days and Southeastern Conference, also held at the Ravine Gardens. And whereas in 1938, the JC's changed the name of their event to the Azalea Festival, again held at the Gardens in conjunction with All Florida Shrine Day. The event included a pageant on February 20, 1938. Miss Geraldine Meyer of St. Petersburg was chosen from a field of 10 contestants and crowned as the first Azalea Queen. And whereas throughout the years, 63 women have been crowned Azalea Queen or Miss Azalea as the title was, was come to be known. The pageant, a qualifier for the Miss Florida pageant, has been seen, has seen two of its queens crowned Miss Florida. And one, Miss Tara Don Holland, was also crowned Miss America in 1997. And whereas throughout the years, the JC's Azalea Festival always held in early March in conjunction with Shrine Day and the Azalea Queen pageant grew and changed and was held annually except for three years during World War II and six years during the 1950s until the Palaka JC's was disbanded after the 1996 Azalea Festival. And whereas in 1997 the Putnam County Scholarship Foundation took over the, the sponsorship of the festival and kept the tradition of the festival through 2003's festival season. In 2005, the Palatka Main Street Board of Directors trademarked the name and organized the 59th annual Palatka Azalea Festival. The 2018 Palatka Azalea <coughs> Festival, organized by Downtown Palatka Inc., marks the 72nd festival held, which makes it one of the oldest festivals in Florida. Now, therefore, Ontario Hill, together with the members of the Palatka City Commission, do hereby proclaim March 2nd through 4th, 2018, as the 72nd annual. Azalea Festival Days in the city of Palatka. We urge all citizens to take part in planned activities, fun and festivities of this one of Florida's oldest and most time-honored festivals to thank its organizers, both past and present, for their hard work and contributions to our community's history and heritage. And witness whereof I'm here to set my hand and cause it be affixed to seal the city of Palatka, Florida on this 22nd day of February in the year of our Lord. 2018, Gerald Hill Mayor, Mary Lawson Brown, Rufus Forum, Justin Campbell, and Tammy McCaskill Commissioners, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. There's a motion in Florida. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up, we have employee recognitions. First up is Mr. Matt Reynolds. <laughs> so Matt, we forgot your recognition. <laughs> September 23rd, 2017 to February 14th, 2018, with sincere appreciation for eight years of dedicated public service and leadership to the citizens, officials, and staff to see you back to Florida. Palatka City Commission, February 22nd, 2018. And before we present this to Matt, I, I've got to say, uh, Matt has done a wonderful job for us. He is the guru of numbers. Uh, he has an institutional knowledge of this organization, and he's one of our young people who worked his way up from the bottom. And so we thank him for his service. Uh, we wish him the best at the county. Um, we know you're not very far away, 
and we appreciate you. So again, my rules, thank you.
for people to grow. Matt's a shining example for you young people of what happens when you come back home after you've gone off and got your education. He came back to Palatka. We recognized his abilities, so did the county, and he's continuing to grow within this community. And one day we look forward to seeing him actually leaving this county forward as an administrator and what other capacities God may have for him. But we thank you and we look for more great things out of you. Thank you. We also want to make sure we recognize uh, Planning Director Thad Pro for seven years of service. He's retiring as well. Mr. Crow is not here with us today, but we also have a plaque for him. He's here. Oh, Mr. Crow, you, I get to give my speech now. citizens, officials, and staff of the City of Palatka, Florida, Palatka City Commission, February 22nd, 2018. For those of you who don't realize what the Planning Director does, that, that is a part of an organization that sets the vision and helps when new businesses want to come in. And, and one of the things that he has done is he set a standard of how he wants Palatka to look. And so he has been instrumental in a lot of new businesses coming in, the landscape and those things that take place with those businesses. He runs the building zoning department over there, and he's been with us, and so he's going to retire from the city of Palaka after seven years, and we want to thank him for his dedicated service to this community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's very kind of you and unexpected. Uh, it's been a great run, and I appreciate being of service to the city. A lot of great relationships here, and uh, got to meet a lot of really nice people, and it's it's been all very positive. So thank you all very much. Our next presentation is by someone who's probably retired from three jobs throughout the years, but uh, I, I can tell you this: this next person that we have coming up is, is just a wonderful person. We've got a Black History presentation coming up. Um, and I want to bring up none other than uh, our former state representative, great attorney, uh, great citizen of this community, another shining example, although he's from that southern end of Crescent City, but he's a shining example of what Putnam County can do when you really put your mind to it once an elite basketball player over in Crescent City, but he's also had the opportunity to become an attorney, a school district attorney. Uh, he went on to represent us in the Florida legislature where he was the chair of education appropriations. Um, but I think one of the things that he's been able to do is take St. John's River State College to the next level. And he has brought his expertise into place. Uh, and I think Mr. Holmes will attest uh, the commitment of Joe Pickens has been a wonderful thing for this community, and he's going to come forward and do a Black History presentation. And uh, as he comes forward with that presentation, uh, I'll say a couple words and turn it over to you.
really very personal to me, and uh, so I appreciate the mayor inviting me. Actually, the mayor's and mine friendship really started out of what really was conflict over a decision that we made at the college regarding an athletic program. And so the Collier Blocker recognition, the Collier Blocker scholarships that are offered at the college really uh, came out of that. And so it's one of the real examples to me that um, that I think when good people start with conflict, but they're really good people inside, sometimes it can create the strongest bonds and friendships that are imaginable. I think that's what's happened with me and with the mayor. So Collier Blocker was an opportunity for two people that cared, who has the same mission in mind, and just different different roads to get to the same place. And it ended up being uh, what I think is a very beneficial and sustaining part of education overall, uh, particularly for uh, minority students within this community. I uh, want to talk a little bit about black history as we start out. <laughs> and so black history started out with Dr. Carter G. Woodson in 1947. Um, it was Negro Achievement Week, and it was an opportunity um, after the Emancipation Proclamation when slavery ended to really celebrate the accomplishments of African Americans throughout this country. Uh, that event, Negro Achievement Week, eventually became Black History Month, which we celebrate every February. Um, and, and so it, it continued on from there. And so tonight we get an opportunity to truly celebrate um, many of the great things that happened, and we're going to highlight what happened as a result. Um, both of segregated schools, which took place prior to the 1960s, and complete desegregation in 1969. One of the things that you'll find that's most interesting is when schools were desegregated throughout the state of Florida before the education system created uh, the community college system that we have today, Collier Blocker Junior College was one of the magnificent 12. There were 12 predominantly black junior colleges throughout the state of Florida during segregation, um, and those schools were created, and what the school that we're highlighting today is Collier Blocker Junior College. It started out at Greater Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, which is my home church, at 1000 North 19th Street in Palatka. That church needed a location. The pastor at that time was Reverend James A. Wright, and he agreed to let the church start there in 1960. You had 59 students go in to call your blocker and start out there. So now I'm going to turn it over to President Pickens, and President Pickens will go ahead and give you... Um, more information about just what Collier Blocker means to this community and why it's so important to keep that heritage. So what's in a name? Well, in this particular case, apparently quite a lot. And so I brought an excerpt from Dr. Walter Smith's book, The Magnificent Twelve, which, chron well, which chronologues the, the history of the 12 um, black junior colleges that existed in Florida um, in the late 1950s into the mid-1960s um, before they were all integrated um, and we had one, one single system. But the name originally was not to be Collier Blocker. And so I'm going to read you this because you can't make this stuff up. This actually really, really happened in Palaka, Florida in 1958. The counties that were originally going to be involved uh, included Flagler County, and at the last minute, Flagler County dropped out and Clay County came in. So we have this service area that we still represent today as St. John's River State College in Flat and um, St. John's, Clay, and Putnam counties. So a split advisory group forwarded the name Pupla John Community College, Pupla John Junior College, to President Williams for his, rec for his recommendation. They had combined the names of Putnam, Clay, and St. John's counties into an acronym type structure. Nobody pr could pronounce it and nobody could spell it, yet that's the name that went up to the State Board of, of Education. Fortunately, cooler and more sane heads prevailed in Tallahassee, something that doesn't necessarily happen these days, but in the 50s and 60s it, it, it did. And so the, um, the State Board of Education rejected the name Pupla John. Um, State Representative Gator Beck from Palaka expressed his same feelings about the name. And then Dr. James Wattenbarger, who was the father of the community college system in Florida, also said that no college will have that name because not only will it be continuously misspelled and mispronounced, but it will cause legal complications in the routine operations of the school. So, what did the school board do, finally, in order to determine a name? 
something that they should have done in the first place. They asked the black leaders of the time to meet and decide how, who or how they wanted their college name. It was a very heated discussion because there were some very deserving people. But ult ultimately, and just before the college um, opened, the, uh, the name was created Collier Blocker. And you can see that Collier Blocker Junior College was named after two black <coughs> educators, um, Dr. Nathan Collier and Sarah Blocker, and there they are, who had combined efforts to establish the first Florida Normal and Industrial College in St. Augustine. <coughs> Collier Blocker Junior College offered um, classes from 1960 to 65. Um, the last class graduated in the spring of 1964, and in 1965, um, the Co Collier Blocker campus was renamed the Collier Blocker Center and became a part of St. John's River Junior College at the time. Ultimately, the Collier Blocker um, campus was dissolved and there was true and full integration of the white and black populations at St. John's River Junior College uh, in 1966 along with all of the other 12. Interestingly enough, in some circles, the merger of the <coughs> college were not, was not popular and not just stereotypically with the white population, but frankly, there was a big um, feeling within the black community that their identity would be lost once the merger came and they went to the white school. And I think that frankly, they were right, because um, for a number of years that was in fact the case as the legacy and memory of Carl and Collier Blocker faded over the generations. The administration at the time was Dean Cleo Higgins and President Albert Williams, uh, president Williams was given a very difficult, difficult task. He was named the president and told to open the school, and he had about six weeks to do so. Uh, and, and the mayor already talked about they found a place for, for it to be. Um, everyone cooperated to make it possible for um, Collier Blocker to open uh, with 59 students in 1960. And students did indeed come from Clay County and from St. John's County, and in fact a few from Flagler County in that inaugural class. Here's a picture of the first, some of the first students that were um, in front of the Shiloh Baptist Church, as the mayor mentioned, the first home of Collier Blocker. Here is the welcome, and you can see this is the Viking Horn from 1964, <coughs> um, which talks about um, the St. John's River Junior College now administering Collier Blocker as the merger begins to occur. And so they're, they are separate for a year uh, before the merger becomes complete. Here are pictures of class officers in 1965. And um, for those of you that have been in Palaka a long time, some of the names are going to be very, very familiar to you. And certainly for me and for the mayor, um, these are the parents of, uh, of friends of ours, colleagues of ours, people that we played ball with and went to school with. And for me, as a school board attorney, um, people that I served with and their family members um, who were all originally educated at Collier Blocker, many of whom went on to Bethune-Cookman um, to, um, to get their bachelor's degree, and many, in fact, went into the teaching, teaching profession. Here's also, they had a men's and women's senate, and here you can see them. And they also had student government. So they functioned just as we function today with all of the clubs and organizations that, um, that, that we have today, including, as I mentioned, student government. Here is, um, we had a dedication of the wall. And if you ever come to the administration building where my office is um, at St. John's, you'll see that we have the Collier Blocker Junior College wall. And it has um, many of, well, you can see the things that are, are on the wall, including the picture of the original president and some pictures, um, some of the pictures you just saw are actually um, on the wall there. These are members of the <coughs> original classes who were still alive and here when we had the dedication of the wall uh, on de December the 5th, um, 2012. And to the far um, left in the red shirt and jacket is Dr. Walter Smith, who had previously been the president of Florida A&M University. Uh, and who was, is the author of the book that I mentioned and who was the keynote speaker for, um, for that event. I'm going to wrap this up quickly because I'm reminded that I went to Tampa uh, to meet Dr. Smith and invite him to be, uh, to be the, um, the speaker. He was the only, he was the perfect person. And I told him that he had 15 to 20 minutes to talk about Collier Blocker. Um, Dr. Smith used all 48 <coughs> minutes of the 15 to 20 minutes that I allocated to him. 
Uh, and actually, it was quite quite an event. And then here up in the top right was real a real um, joy. Um, these are relatives, descendants of, of um, Dr. Williams, um, including a sister who a sister or a um, cousin who lived in Chicago and actually stumbled across the articles about the creation of Collier Blocker um, on the internet and came down to Palaka to meet me and to see um, to see the um, the Collier Blocker recognition and so that was a real joy to meet members of, of Mr. Albert Williams' family. Now what I use, always say is that a wall is certainly nice and it is important to me that when people walk into the administration building where the president's office is that the first thing they see before they can get to the president's office is they see that um, that call your blocker wall and it grabs your attention and you can't help but gravitate over to it. But you'll see in the very far right, um, with the, the gentleman in the hat and then the, the um, lady next to him, you can see what is a plaque. Now, that plaque has the names of all of the people who have received Call Your Blocker scholarships since we created the scholarship program back in 2012. The scholarship comes with full tuition and books and a monthly stipend to help defer living expenses and also a um, full-time mentor who is a full-time employee of the college. Some are faculty, some work our staff, some are in, in administration. We make every effort to invest everything we can in making sure that the Collier Blocker students are successful. And so for me, the real legacy, the real um, true legacy of Collier Blocker Junior College is more than just plaques on a wall or on the back of a building. It's in the lives of the men and women who receive Collier Blocker scholarships, almost all of whom um, are from here, are going to live here and stay here after they complete their college, their college time, and are going to be um, invested in this community. So it's a real pleasure to be out in the community, and someone sees me and they remind me that they were a Collier Blocker scholar. Many say, and I know they've said it to the mayor, as I've had the mayor speak, give an inspirational talk to um, the Collier Blocker um, scholars often that they say, I would never have been able to achieve what I did were it not for the Collier Blocker scholarship and what it offered me when I thought I had no resources. And so here are some of the Collier Blocker scholars. Uh, interestingly, some are recent high school graduates, but many of them are especially single mothers in their late 20s or early 30s once and 40s. Once you qualify, um, with a 2.5 or above for a Collier Blocker, then we don't look at the academics after that. We look at what people's circumstances are. We look at their need. We look at the desire um, of somebody to learn. And it's really maybe not surprising how many of the essays, we have, they have to write an essay, start off with, I made so many poor choices when I was a young person, and now I'm having to make up for them and pay for them. Um, I, I wish, you know, half of half, I think, really, of the essay start off with, I wish I had made some of the decisions that I made when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. Uh, and so you, you, if you come to a Collier Blocker reunion, you'll see that certainly there are some that came um, right out of college, like the um, young man that thought he was going to play football with Bethune, Ryan. Uh, but also um, men and women in their 30s and, as the mayor mentioned, 40s who are getting a second chance uh, at an education through the Collier Blocker Scholarship. This was originally done for Collier Blocker and um, President Williams, but it's in the very back of the technology building, at the very back of the co college campus where, frankly, nobody sees it. I had been the college president for more than two years before I knew that that was even there. And that was one of the motivations for me to more prominently um, recognize and remember all of the contributions that Collier Blocker made um, to this community during its existence. Here's another um, good picture of the entire Collier Blocker wall. And then, of course, part of this, and what I think one of the reasons the mayor invited me, and I thank you for doing that, is we're celebrating the 60th anniversary now of St. John's River State College from 1958 to 2018. <coughs> and frankly, for me, as you can tell, um, Call Your Blocker is a huge part for me of the St. John's River State College family. And Mayor, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to come and make this presentation to these young people and to their to their parents. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. So, so there's one thing that I don't want you guys to be, to be lost on is black history is not just for black folks. Black history 
country's American history. It's Putnam County history. And Call Your Blocker is a part of something that's so great in this community. And it's something that so many people miss. But it's a chance for folks who, we've got scholarship recipients I've sat on the committee for, since its inception. We've got scholarship recipients who sent their kids through school, single mothers who had three kids and never got a chance to follow their dreams, who now have fully paid college scholarships. And so that they have an opportunity to move forward. We've got young people who lost their way in athletics, who now have full scholarships once they got back on the right track and they've got an opportunity just to make it. And so Call Your Blocker in so many ways started out of controversy, but what it's done, it's, it's preserved a very important part of education and history. Sarah Blocker and Dr. Collier founded Florida Normal, which is now Florida Memorial College, Florida Memorial University in Miami. And that school was in St. Augustine. There was a rich history in St. Augustine particularly during the marches with Dr. King, and now it's become a very, a, a extremely fast-growing university down in Miami. That history starts right here in Palatka. And we've got to understand just how important Palatka was to education. Because out of all of that that we talked about with Call Your Blocker, Palatka, Central Academy High School in Palatka was the first accredited black high school in the state of Florida, and the pipeline for those kids that came through, they were on the top, and we got to build that history, and it takes having leadership like Joe Pickens to not have it in the back of the school, but to have it at the forefront, so that when children look at why they need to be proud, the proof is in the pudding, the history's there, and that's why we continually celebrate and continue the dream of Dr. Carter G. Woodson from 1947. So again, we want to thank Dr. We want to thank uh, President Pickens for a great job. We want to celebrate 60 years of St. John's River State College, but we also want to celebrate Call Your Blocker Junior College. And so definitely thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our time wouldn't be well spent. Um, I, I want to turn to Vice Mayor Brown, who's been around here uh, on the commission for a number of years, but is a historian in her own right, particularly she's the historian for uh, Florida Black Caucus of Locally Elected Officials, a state organization um, which memorializes history just like Call Your Blocker. And I want her to say a few words. Um, and I, if she can come down for me just for a second, I know she told me she didn't really want to do a bunch of standing, but I need her down here just for a second, just to talk a little bit about Call Your Blocker. He asked me, uh, he started talking about Collier Blocker, and they talked about Florida Memorial College, which was in St. Augustine for many, many years. And as they brought up the name Sarah Blocker, I looked at our man, kind of laughed. I said, I knew her. And people would say, yeah. And I knew uh, Professor Blocker, too, because my mother taught at, at Florida Memorial College. In the 1930s, she got a master's degree from uh, Columbia University and came back to Florida, but she was from St. Augustine to teach. And she be, uh, became over the uh, English department and the practice teaching department. And for years, I ran into people that she had taught how to teach other people throughout the, college, uh, the years. The, um, there were but three schools that black to attend that time, and one was Bethune, the other was FAMU and uh, Florida Memorial. A lot of our teachers started out their uh, education after they left Palatka High and went to Florida Memorial and then later went to work on masters at the upper school so that they could extend their education. Ms. Blocker and Professor Akari were both buried on the property in St. Augustine. I think they, after they moved to school, they picked them up. But our family was a funeral home at that time that took care of both of their services. And Ms. Blocker, as an older lady, my mother said they had to wear their, all their skirts to the ankles. Nobody could show ankles, and they had a very precise way of doing it. The college was very progressive. It had an indoor tennis court and an outdoor swimming pool, administration building, a library, two doms, a girls and boys dom, and another uh, dom there for the teachers that worked there because they lived right on campus. And they had it where the train, as they brought students from other places, stopped right down the road so those kids could get off and go back and forth to school 
at the time. It was very progressive, and those people were really interested in educating us. It was a big part of the city of Palatka because a lot of our people left here, and it was a place that they could go because the travel wasn't as expensive. So Palatka has been a part of the history of the state of Florida for a very long time. Before you leave, before you leave, let me just tell you a little bit about this lady. Since we're celebrating black history, one of the things you got to understand is she is the first elected African-American official in Putnam County. First female elected African-American official in Putnam County. She's been on the commission for 30, 34 years. I don't know. There's a, there's a count on days as well. But she's been on the commission for that long. She serves on the Florida Fund, Florida Municipal Trust Fund's board. She's a member of the Florida League of Cities board. She has served in every major capacity except for president within the Florida League of Cities, and she's turned down several opportunities to campaign for that position. But she's an icon in her own right, and I don't think that Palatka really celebrates what we have. Whenever we go places with the Florida League of Cities, and we say Palatka, the first thing they say is Mary Lawson Brown. Mary Lawson Brown has been an advocate for this community for a very long time. 34 years on the commission <coughs> is a very long time to be committed to your community. And so for that, today, we want to make sure as we celebrate black history that we are not, we're not going to miss out. It says, give them their flowers while they yet live. So Mary Lawson Brown, you are truly a Palaka Pride Hometown Hero, and the Palaka Pride Hometown Hero Award goes to you this time, and it's presented to Mary Lawson Brown in grateful recognition of your devotion to the advancement and success of the city of Palaka and Putnam County through community advocacy, Palaka City Commission, and staff, February 22, 2018. You're our hometown hero.
just as Commissioner Williams and Commissioner Campbell do within the school system. And, and oftentimes we forget just to say thank you for the sacrifices that they make. And so today we want to make sure we celebrate our educators and we tell them thank you for the great job they've done. Thank right. you.
recess. We'll ask that the administrators step out. We're going to take a picture for the newspaper. So we'll have all our recipients form two lines right here. Two rows right here for the newspaper. We'll go across the dais. And uh, we'll stand in turn. Parents, you'll have an opportunity to take photographs with your child if you want to. And so we'll be in recess so that you memorialize this moment. All right. That's what we're going to do. So public comments will be limited to three minutes, Mr. Best. Three minutes for public comments, no action will be taken on topic of discussions. If there's anyone here for public comments, please fill out the yellow speaker card so we'll have a record of you for today's meeting. First up, Mr. Zinni Best. Hello, my name is Mr. Zinni Best. I live at 200 Hayes Drive, East of Florida, 32148. I'm here to do a sad occasion today. One person, uh, therapist that worked in this county for about 25 years past this weekend, and uh, Mr. Alex Sharp, and uh, through his uh, tutoring and patience, uh, we got started with developing the psychosocial vocation. We were a rehabilitation center for people with mental illnesses. So all you need to qualify to join this club is what a history of some time in your lifetime having a mental illness. With this agency, we'll deal with everything that has to do with mental illness, housing, uh, food, clothing, transportation, uh, study, we talk to each other, we make sure all your uh, available services that are out there that you qualify for, you get them. It's so sorely needed in this county. And once this clubhouse opens up, you'll see Putnam County start to shine. Uh, this the clubhouse model is around the world. It's all 50 states. It's in all 50 states. The closest clubhouse to us is in St. Augustine, uh, uh, Gainesville, rather. It is a, uh, a drop-in center in St. Augustine. But they're so far away. Uh, we need one here in our county here. Clubhouses do work. Uh, there are people walking the streets today. Uh, with nowhere to go because they don't know what to do. If you have a mental illness, it's impossible, to, impossible for you to get through the stigma and what's in front of you to, to live a decent life. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mr. Betts. Is there anyone else here for public comment? Seeing no one, we'll close public comment. Moving on to the consent agenda. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the events from the consent agenda? the motion to approve all items. There's a second by Commissioner McCaskill. Is there any further discussion? Well, I call all the members say aye. Aye. Opposed the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. 
Moving on to item five of the agenda, which is public hearing. Public hearing. The first one up is public hearing resolution transmitting to the Board of Department of Economic Opportunity. The city's proposed amendments to its adopt a comprehensive plan which is necessary to reflect changes in the state requirement as mandated by Florida Statute 163.3191 for adoption. Resolution of the City of Palatka, Florida, transmitting to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for review proposed amendments to the comprehensive plan of the City of Palatka, which are necessary to reflect changes in state requirements which have occurred since the city last updated its comprehensive plan, all as mandated by Chapter 163.3191, Florida Statutes. I would like to make a motion. So moved. Second. This motion is on the floor. The second by Vice Mayor Brown. We're now over the floor of public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close public hearing. Is there any further discussion? Questions? Questions called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Moving on. Discussion of the Golf Course Advisory Board. Ms. Driggers? Betsy Driggers, City Park. The golf course has been under private management contract since last February. When I contacted the golf course manager, Mr. Hertz, about renewing the members of the Golf Course Advisory Board, there are four members who are appointed annually and one member that's appointed every three years. He said that they had not met in some time. The original purpose of the Golf Course Advisory Board, it's been in place for decades, was as a sounding board for golf course members to bring their concerns and their requests to in order to have those vetted before they came to the city commission. And there's really not been much of a reason to meet. They used to hold regular meetings, but they have not met in quite some time. And so the question now becomes, since they are now under a private management contract and the board, none of that actually comes to the commission because they are under a private management contract, the question is, do we want to continue with the board? They also, in fact, they have their own association out there with membership, which has been very forthcoming to the commission as well. I think, you know, the advisory board has probably met its course. Any comments? I second that. I don't see a need to have a board, especially if they already have their own under contract. So there's nothing that we can do. So when does the last term expire? Well, the three-year member, his term expires January in 2019. But if you sunset the board, then all the terms are expired. And right now, the one-year member's term has expired at the end of January. Well, can we not look to people that's on that board to fill the other vacancies that we do have on boards in the city if they do that? Let's have a communication with them, letting them know what the transition has been, and see if they're interested in serving at other capacity. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that to our attention as well. Can we get a motion to sunset the board? We can make a motion to sunset. Let's not do it yet, only because let's make sure that there are no concerns that need to be brought forward by the existing members of the board. Let's give them an opportunity to respond back first, and then we can bring it back to the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, Qualified Opportunity Zones. Mr. Frederick Washington, Economic Development Partner, Mount Faber Consulting, LLC. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon. It's so good to be back in Palatka. My name is Fred Washington. I once was in the capacity of working for the federal government, and what I did in my former capacity was to let the city know about various funding opportunities that were available nationwide. So I am since retired from that position, and you'll forgive the smile that it's hard to mask, but I am now in the private consulting area, and I just wanted to let you know about my availability and willingness to keep you apprised, even in my new, less stressful capacity, 
uh, to, to let you know. And, and I had an opportunity to meet with city staff earlier in the day about uh, opportunity zones. And uh, I see that as a, a wonderful opportunity to do mass development. I mean, incredible development. Uh, every time I come here, I see something new that I like. Um, I see a new business. Uh, I, I see now that the waterfront is developed. I see all these wonderful opportunities. Uh, and so I want to just, again, let you know that I'm available uh, to discuss various opportunities in the future. And opportunity uh, zones are one of the things that I did uh, bring to the attention of the staff. And just very <laughs> briefly, it's, uh, it involves designating 420, uh, 425 various zones around the state of Florida that, that are eligible for uh, captured funds to do development. And uh, so I just wanted to let you know about that and let you know how good it is to see you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, now I'm going to take you up on that. You got the same phone number? Or a different one? Same one, yes, ma'am. Any, yes, any questions? So opportunity zones, just so that for the public, opportunity zones are akin to the new markets tax credits that we've talked about before. Um, those designations will be put in place by the governor, um, and it creates tax incentives for people to come to your community that invest. And so uh, it is uh, roughly 40 days left to get that done before March 28th. There will be an extension of 30 days based upon certain applications being in place until April 30th. And so I, I think it creates an opportunity for communities like ours that qualify to be uh, incentivized <coughs> for investors as they move forward. And it gives you a few more things that you don't necessarily get from the market tax credits. So uh, again, thank you, Mr. Washington, for coming thank forward. You, Always coming coming back and forth to the city of Black to give us additional information that may be beneficial to us no matter what capacity you're serving in. Yes, so sir. thank you, definitely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good to thank you. Thank you. Good see you. <laughs> Item number eight of the agenda, city manager and administrative reports, Ms. Robinson. Ms. Uh, Commissioner Campbell actually has our reports, so I'll go ahead and take that. Commissioner Campbell, do we need to say before the end? You don't have to. And I'll just yield my time at the end. Um, <laughs> we are in the process of moving forward with our internship for this year. Um, we've taken into consideration um, some of the things that the students from last year and the year prior um, spoke about. So we have developed an actual curriculum as well as some of the um, department head um, gave feeding. So we actually created a curriculum this year that we're in the process of finalizing that will give the students a more um, intense hands-on experience, um, whereas last year, um, I think it was good, but each year we're trying to take it to another step um, higher. Um, so we are super excited about that. Um, we look to have that information out uh, no later than the latter part, the middle part of March. Um, Ms. Robinson has been vital in that she has taken my gripes and complaints um, in, and I think we are really going to make this year um, one of the best years um, thus far. I know one of the things that uh, has been talked about and that we've all been engaging um, other businesses who've heard about our internship program. Um, and uh, there are businesses out there now, there are other governmental agencies that are interested. And I think this is a perfect time for community partners who are willing to provide summer jobs for children, uh, for our students, um, as an opportunity to really invest in them early. Um, this is a great time to partner with the city as we move forward. Um, we've already got some large corporations that are interested in bringing some kids on, and I just want to continually applaud you guys for the work that you're doing. Um, and we're going we're gonna to move forward to try to get some of those other partnerships that we had initially out in place so that we can get this thing done. So, again, thank you guys. Um, Chief. <coughs> sure. Yes, sir. So, uh, We'll move up to uh, Mr. Griffin. You've had about 10 meetings today, so. <coughs> no report tonight, sir. Just a question. What is that, the boat, the boat down there, had an opportunity to go in and kind of tour it? Ship store? Yeah. So what is the ship store? Uh, we're still working on finalizing the last phase of the mm -hmm. agreement. There's a current agreement in place. I believe Mr. Holmes is working uh, towards getting a, a final agreement in place to bring in front of the commission. And I think they tentatively said they would be coming or trying to start operating.
operations sometime in April. Um, I know they're still running a limited operation. They expect to run the boat during the Azalea Festival, and um, they're still running some other uh, special reserve trips. Have we got the CO yet? I'm sorry? Have we got the CO? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, <coughs> how is the lighting system? Because I know I've passed by um, a few evenings and lights were on. Is it an automatic light system or is it something that someone has to physically go in and turn on? So that's so a very good question. Lighting. Everything is on the photo cell uh, okay. downtown the riverfront. So as soon as there's a, you know, a certain amount of darkness, if you will, or uh, you, know, the, you could actually go downtown and see different phases of the lighting turn on at different times based upon where they are uh, with larger buildings. But everything's on a photo cell server, so it's on all night long. Thank you. Lieutenant or Captain, what do you have for us? We've got, we got Lieutenant Brown here today. It's good to see you. Sir. Well, how many days do we have till retirement? 278. <laughs> <laughs> and who's counting? Uh, All right, come on up, Captain. Who's <laughs> counting? Yeah. How you guys doing? Great. Captain Williams, Black Police Department. Uh, really not much to report. I'm uh, really excited about this coming weekend. It's our last weekend for Black Power Basketball. So we have an opportunity to come out, and um, it's the championship weekend, so it's a really good game. Not, not that they're all not good, but this weekend will be really good. And you also get the chance to see Commissioner Warren, uh, referee. He came out with us last week. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if you want to get a good chuckle, come see that, at least. Chiefs uh, uh, Yes, and uh, we wrapped up the uh, Chiefs ball this past weekend. It was a, a, a huge success. Um, we had a we had an amazing turnout. Uh, the event was um, I like to call it peanut butter school because it was nice, uh, and we look forward to it again next year. We've already talked about um, talked about some of the things we can do to make it better. Um, all the way it was pretty good. Thank you, thank you very much. And give our regards to Chief as well, <coughs> Mr. Ewell. Sorry, hands up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be real quick. I've just got a quick notice about a notice to proceed that the uh, city manager signed today. That the project is going to start Monday to, to install 4,000 feet of uh, chain link fence on the southwest quadrant of the airport. So in case you, anybody asks you about that, you'll see in trucks and equipment moving in and out of the airport. I just want to make you aware. It's, uh, you know, it's got an old, old fence with a lot of holes in it in the southwest quadrant that is being fixed starting Monday. Thank you. And that's all, sir. Thank you, sir. Great job. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, I'll save you for last. Ms. Triggers. <coughs> got a, we've got a, a new finance director here. I'll, I'll go ahead and let you introduce her, Mr. Reynolds. And maybe she can accompany you up to the podium as well. Um, earlier this week, um, the uh, we offered the position of finance director to uh, to uh, another local person from Palanca. Um, this is Logan Becker. She uh, comes to us from uh, Florida uh, State College in Jacksonville, and uh, she previously worked at um, St. John's River State College under uh, President Pickens. Um, she will be finishing up her master's degree in accounting in this summer, and. Um, I think she's going to do very well. Again, like I said, she's here from Palaka. And uh, it's good to see somebody get uh, the same chance that I had. And I think uh, she's, she's definitely going to be uh, better than, than I was a finance director. So. She's not as tall. No. Uh, saw, and I have my little five six. So, yeah. <laughs> so again, Ms. Becker, welcome. Thank you. I welcome to the family. We'll yes. Thank you. So we look forward to just as many great things that we've received from Matt over the years. Thank you. So I want to add to that, um, Logan is going to be a breath of fresh air. I told staff already that the next finance director will not be 6'6", six, six. so um, <laughs> they understood that. And um, she graduated summa cum laude from Palacca High School. She's a local product. Um, it's one of, the, one of the initiatives that I had based on this recognition is that there was a desire to bring opportunities to young people from Palacca who had gone on to college, but to give them opportunities to come back home and provide them with uh, able the ability to work and serve the community. 
um, Logan had been traveling back and forth between Black and Jacksonville for work. And so to be able to bring her home to this community, um, somebody who was reared in the public school systems here in the city of Black, somebody who has gone on to college and achieved great things, her last position she was the Assistant Director of Budget and Jury Services for Florida State College. Um, I'm excited by this opportunity to be able to provide to her. And a lot of it has to do with this commission, their, their desire to want to see young people have opportunities within the community. That was a focus of mine when we started looking for a new finance director. Not only somebody who was competent, not only somebody who had a passion for the numbers and who knew the numbers, but also somebody who could make it happen that was from the community, that was a local product. So to be able to bring a local product home, I'm very, very, very excited by it. By it. She'll be starting here on March the 20th. One of the additional things that I like that Logan did, Logan recommended um, being able to come once a week to do some transition things. Today was her first day on her own dime. She's going to come once a week um, and use leaving her um, current job to be able to come back and start that transition process. I'm excited to have her here. Her and Matt, our classmates, um, Matt has been helpful in terms of doing the transition process, and he has volunteered to continue that process. So I'm excited to have Logan here with us, a hometown product of the city of Black.
definitely get to the Panthers game tonight. Um, so know that. It's not that I want to rush off to too quickly, but I definitely want to go and support them. We'll be in contact with the commissioner this week about time to set up one-on-ones with each of you. So you'll see the email this week or receive a phone call about today. And so did you know Mr. Poston came in here on the 15th. He's probably been popping in and out for the last few weeks. But when he came in, uh, it's been some long evenings. Uh, he was here till about 10 o'clock the other night uh, working. And, uh, you know, Betsy, I think you may have somebody who's going to give you a run for your money. <laughs> 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 the doors are left open, and I find that at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I can yeah. tell you, he's, he's, he's been coming in, and he's been working. Yeah. Yeah. Been working. We, yeah. The day's been a nonstop day of work, and we're, welcome. we're glad to have you here. And we are ready for festival season. And so there's yep. a good time out there. Uh, there was a thread of the blue crab. The blue crab is back on. Azalea is back on. And we are rolling. March 2nd is Mayor's reception at the Bronson Mahalo's house. We are now adjourned.